Hey, what's up, Bully Fam? This is Chris signing in once again for another episode of our channel, Film Bully Camp Channel. Today, we're gonna talk about how to weld puppies, and of course, we're gonna tackle from the start, from the C-section down to going home with the puppies and the aftercare of the mom. Of course, she just got out from surgery. Uh, we're gonna talk about the safety of the puppies and how to survive them. Okay, please do stand by and let's go! Newborn Puppy Care For the first two weeks of life, a puppy is considered a neonate, born with his eyes and ears closed. He enters the world blind, deaf, and neurologically underdeveloped. At this early stage, there is almost no difference in brain activity between the time he is sleeping and the time when he is awake. Hypoxia is oxygen deprivation or low blood oxygen. Hypoxia in newborn puppies can be managed by putting the puppy in an oxygen chamber. An oxygen tank or oxygen concentrator will improve oxygenation of the pup's blood. Hypothermia in puppies is low body temperature. Hypothermic pups have four-fold increase in risk of death. Since a puppy cannot regulate his body temperature well until he is three weeks old, use a rectal thermometer and weather station to monitor the temperature and humidity. Avoid feeding until the puppy has an appropriate rectal temperature for one hour. If a puppy has a low body temperature, increase surface temperature and avoid use of a heat lamp due to risk of dehydration. A good guide to different temperatures for newborn puppies is the room temperature should be 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Surface temperature is equal to 90 degrees to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Rectal temperature must be 94 degrees Fahrenheit to 96 degrees Fahrenheit for the first 24 hours. Hydration is the fluid balance in the body. Dehydration is the lack of adequate fluids, usually taken in as milk during nursing. Monitor hydration by looking at the urine color collected by stimulations on a dry white cotton ball or tissue. Hydration can be managed by increasing nursing, bottle feeding, tube feeding, or by injecting fluids subcutaneously Electrolytes such as breeders, puppy light are useful for puppies showing signs of dehydration or for puppies who are vomiting and are having diarrhea. These are to be given orally. Hypoglycemia is low blood glucose or sugar. Hypoglycemia in puppies is caused by lack of adequate nutrition and using too many calories for staying warm and moving around. Puppies with a glucose of less than 90 grams per DL have a fourfold increased risk of death. To manage hypoglycemia, use a glucometer and a foot pad stick to diagnose the low glucose. Start or increase calorie intake by tube or bottle feeding. Glucose can be orally or by IV administration. Newborn puppies need to be warm and clean so they can remain healthy. Puppies cannot generate heat on their own and rely on their mom and other puppies for warmth. You should also strive to keep them in a warm environment away from drafts. For the most part, mothers will clean the puppies on their own. However, if the mother refuses, you can gently clean the puppies on your own. You should also keep their crate clean. 
Make sure the puppies are developing normally. Any unusual changes should be evaluated by a vet. Now we go to the external bodily functions that affect the puppies. First is temperature. Make sure the temperature is safe. You should invest in a thermometer in the room or area where your puppies are kept. The temperature should always be between 85 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit for the first 4 days. After this, the temperature can be reduced to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Indoors, a heating lamp can be used to achieve this temperature. You do not need to keep the entire room at these temperatures. Or you can use an incubator so that it's easier to control the temperature. An environmental relative humidity of 55 to 65 percent is adequate to prevent drying of the skin in a normal newborn puppy. However, a relative humidity of 85 to 90 percent is more effective in maintaining puppies. They are small and weak. As we have learned earlier, hypoxia is an oxygen deprivation or low blood oxygen. Hypoxia in newborn puppies can be managed by putting the puppy in an oxygen chamber. An oxygen tank or oxygen concentrator will improve oxygenation of the puppy's blood. Room air is only 20% oxygen. Oxygen concentrators provide 95% oxygen and oxygen tanks provide 100% oxygen. By increasing the oxygen in the pup's environment with a face mask, blow by or in an oxygen chamber incubator, you, you will improve the chances of the pup's survival until they are breathing strongly enough to survive in on room air. Newborn puppies need help to go to the bathroom. Their mother does this by licking them, which stimulates them to urinate and defec defecate. If the puppies are orphaned, you can help them by dipping a washcloth or cotton ball in warm water, then gently massaging their bottoms after feeding. Also, make sure to clean up after the place or the environment where the puppies stay and wash your hands before holding the puppies. Newborn puppies should be fed every two hours during their first week of life. The first milk from the mother is the best milk for these newborn puppies because it contains the colostrum which gives them the immunity to other diseases and makes their body stronger to fight those external factors that makes them sick. This also gives them the fluid and calories that they need. If you're caring for an orphan pup, this will mean a lot of nighttime feeding for them. And newborn puppies should be fed every two hours interval. And you have to set an alarm so that you won't forget it. After one week, you may feed your puppy every three hours for the following three weeks until they reach one month. Breathing is so important to the puppies because that's how they get the oxygen. So what we need to do is clear the airway and nasal passages of mucus and fluid. To clear newborn puppy airways and nasal passages of mucus and fluid, First, squeeze the air out of the bulb of the syringe to create a vacuum. Next, gently insert the tip into the nostril. Third, slowly release the bulb to suction out any mucus. And lastly, remove the syringe and squeeze the bulb forcefully to expel the mucus. Hypoglycemia occurs in newborn puppies when they don't get the right amount of milk from their mom and the right nutrition they need. So we have to be observant and we have to give a supplement like milk, formula, food, or sweetened condensed milk to add nutrition to their diet. 
if they're not getting the right milk from their mom. At this time, the food or dog food of the mom should be shifted to a high protein puppy food while she is nursing the puppies because high protein puppy food has more nutrition in it. The mom of the puppies must be served or should eat right after she feeds the puppies so that she could replenish all the milk that she lost and start producing another milk for the puppies. And also, this is a good chance to make the mom go potty or go outside to, to urinate and poop. Puppies should gain 5 to 10% of their body weight daily when the mother's milk supply is inadequate to support this. Supplemental feeding 1 to 6 times per day is recommended and should be performed routinely on any litter with greater than 5 puppies. Now we go to some of the supplies and equipment list. First is weighing scale for the puppies. Second is rectal thermometer. Third is Vaseline, cotton balls, ice cream, oatmeal, gloves, room thermometer, welping pads, towels, and brats. Now we go to the top medical equipment list we need for welping. Incubator, oxygen concentrator, bulb syringe, feeding tube, feeding tube syringe and formula and last on the list is glucometer to sum it up these are the major things that puppies need the average newborn puppy thermo regulates to 11 degrees Fahrenheit above ambient temperature they need 88 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit temperature 40 to 60 percent humidity and all pups benefit from an oxygen-rich environment. C-section time, also called cesarean section, is a surgical procedure when a vaginal delivery is not possible or safe, or when the health of the mother or the puppy is at risk. During this procedure, the puppy is delivered through surgical incisions made in the abdomen and the uterus. We are going to see now a step-by-step -step process of how they do C-section section. Before doing the C-section, make sure you do the uh, reverse progesterone testing on the beach just to make sure the pups are ready to go out. This is important. Before going to the vet, make sure you clean up the beach real good and bring blankets, towels, wipes, and tissue. We are gonna show you now how a c-section is done by the veterinarian. Here she is slicing the belly or the stomach. Pulling out the puppy from the belly. Making a slight opening for the puppy to show up. Now we can see the head of the puppy. The puppy is out with a sack on him, cutting the umbilical cord. Now they're removing passages in the airway or that are blocking it, massaging the puppy for the lungs to work properly, still working on the airway, feeding the puppies with initial milk for them. Also, you will need an alcohol and hand sanitizer before you hold the puppies. Dog crate for mama dog and box or plastic tout for puppies with blankets in it or puppy pads. Also, tell the vet to give a shot to the bitch or mama dog so that she will produce more milk. On your way home, make sure your AC in the car is turned to heater mode because the puppies needs to be warm in order to survive. 
before you feed the puppies, make sure the mama teats or nipple is clean. You can clean it with cotton and water only. Do not use any spray or chemicals on it. The puppies need to eat every two hours. And make sure you turn on your alarm on your phone or any alarm clock so that you would be reminded for the next feeding time. After the puppies are done eating, make sure the bitch will lick anus of each pups thus making the puppies potty and mama dog will keep on licking them till they're done. After feeding the pups, it's time for mama dog or the bitch to go out to go potty. Make sure you guide help her because she might be still weak from surgery. For big leaders and you think that the bitch milk is not enough for all the puppies, a milk replacer with colostrum is needed. Goat's milk formula is a one part milk replacer powder and two parts warm water. Make sure the puppies are laying on their stomach or belly while feeding them. While feeding the puppies and you see them, some of the milk is going out of their nose. Make sure you stop them from eating and use the bulb syringe to remove any milk from their nose. Signs that the puppies are done eating is they sleep and sometimes they will let go of the nipple. Make sure you burp the puppies after feeding. The puppies sometimes have trapped air in their bellies and they will have upset stomach if we don't burp them. So, put them up and tap their back gently and let them burp. After the pups are done eating, make sure you patty the bitch. After pattying the bitch, feed her with good high protein puppy food and add some goat milk, some wet food mix or anything. The goal is to make the bitch eat good to replenish the milk that she lost and produce more milk. Two hours feeding interval is needed. Set alarm especially at nights. On the third week, we should start transitioning the puppies food to mush food. Mush food is uh, like a not too watery, not too dry dog food so that the puppies can just lick it. We can make mush food by mixing water with dry dog food 2 to 3 hours before feeding time. Or you can use a blender to blend the dog food with water. Try to use your fingers or a plastic spoon to introduce it to the puppies so that they will just lick it. On the third to fourth week, puppies must have their teeth grown so that they can chew on more solid food. Again, this is important for the puppies. The environment temperature should be set to 85 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit for the first four days. On the by seven to ten day, it should be 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and on the end of fourth week, it should be 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Puppies cry a lot too when it's too hot for them. So make sure you observe what the puppies are feeling. And do guys, I'm back. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a lot from it because I focus on the baseline, temperature, all the important things that a puppy needs so that we would be feeling more confident when we are welcoming our puppies now. And sometimes it's, it's really, we really get anxious and nervous when we are a first time welcomers for these puppies. But if you know the basics and the baseline things that you need to do, you will be confident and uh, feel secure because the puppies cannot talk to us and tell us what they're doing. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and please do like and share this video and hope to see you on the next videos that I will be doing. See you soon!